Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now I don't usually talk about hurricanes or tropical cyclones, but in this case what we're looking at is so exceptional that I kind of have to talk about it. And that is Hurricane Milton, which is uh, currently a Category 5 hurricane in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Now, quick reminder, Category 5 is the strongest, so this is the strongest category a hurricane can be, and currently it's estimated to have winds around 175 miles an hour. So it's actually well into that Category 5 range, indicating just how strong it is. And the satellite loop, uh, satellite loop I'm playing now is nothing short of exceptional, really. You can see, first of all, the extremely small eye. This is officially a pinhole eye with a radius of roughly 10 nautical miles, uh, and that's kind of a testament to its very small core, which has allowed a rapid, rapid strengthening, which we'll look at shortly. The other thing to take note of is the uh, very intense convection surrounding the center, and also just how symmetrical it is. And you can even see some of the pink showing up, indicating very, very high uh, cloud tops to these thunderstorms, which just goes to show how strong the storm is. And if I play that loop, you can really see how constant it's been just spinning around with that very kind of small eye and very strong convection. And it's going to continue to do so, actually getting fairly close to uh, Mexico, the northern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula, in the next few hours. Now, the National Hurricane Center has it, like I said, at 175 miles per hour, 911 millibars. And if we take a look at the rough track, you can see it's moving just ever so slightly to the southwest, um, sorry, southeast, uh, but more generally to the east, and it's going to make a very close approach to the Yucatan Peninsula with hurricane warnings in force there. Uh, and during this time, it's like to maintain a very, very high intensity. The latest intensity guidance shows actually from now uh, potentially even increases with a maximum possibly approaching 170 knots. Now, 170 knots is expected to be the theoretical maximum possible intensity of any storm in this current region based on the sea surface temperatures. So for, uh, and that's kind of when considering everything, all other conditions are perfect, there are no other limiting factors. So for this storm to be even getting close to that is nothing short of uh, exceptional really. And also the fact that the models have not caught up with the intensification as, as it occurred last night essentially and through, through today as well, it's possible we could see that perhaps even sooner. Now, in terms of that uh, intensification, I thought I'd show you the aircraft recon data. Now, if you're not aware, the uh, National Hurricane Center flies planes into the storms to gather data, that kind of thing, wind speeds, uh, pressure, uh, observations, all of that. Uh, and if you take a look at this last recon mission, you can see when the plane first went in, it found 947 millibars of pressure. Now, the last pass, the plane is now exiting the storm. The last pass was 912 millibars of pressure. So over just the course of a few hours, it has intensified and uh, deepened an insane 35 millibars, which is absolutely crazy. And between passes as well, you're looking at uh, a 30 millibar drop just in the space of an hour and a bit. So this is really exceptional rates of intensification. And also you can see in terms of the wind field, while it is uh, small, and that's because of the compact core, which has allowed it to make use of the warm ocean temperatures, uh, but the uh, winds you can also see have visibly increased uh, into Category 5 status over the last few hours or so. Now, this is a tweet that Sam Lilo made on Twitter. I'll put the link in the description. It's a very interesting graphic, and it shows the rates of deepening for some past notable Atlantic hurricanes. Now, the most notable as of currently is Wilma from 2005, also Rita up there. Both of these storms were Category 5s with high-end impacts and deepened exceptionally rapidly with pinhole eyes as well. And you can now see that Milton has actually surpassed Rita's rate of deepening and is pretty much on par uh, as of this section with Wilma's deepening, which is really, really exceptional. And as I said, with the continued kind of warm waters, low shear, we could potentially see this decrease further over the next few hours. And by the time the next recon mission goes into the storm, potentially we're looking at a sub 900 millibar uh, pressure, which is exceptionally rare for the Atlantic. It would put it as one of the strongest storms in record in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, in terms of how this storm will behave over the next few days, we can take a look at the GFS. Now, bear in mind that none of these models have been able to capture how fast the storm was intensified. So take them with a grain of salt, especially with regards to intensity, more focus on the track. And you can see in terms of forcing, here's some kind of uh, upper level flow to the north. We have this high to the east of the storm. So it can't go into the high. It's moving generally to the northeast and picked up by this subtle trough. Um, 
uh, to the north in the northern Gulf of Mexico. So that's the reason for it heading, unfortunately, towards Florida, as you can see in this National Hurricane Center forecast, with hurricane watches throughout most of the uh, entire kind of Florida Peninsula and surrounding islands as well. And that's slightly at major hurricane status. Um, but the somewhat good news is, as we head towards the kind of time of landfall, which is looking likely to be during Wednesday evening and overnight, possibly into Thursday, we do start to see wind shear increase on the storm uh, as a result of this ridge and also this trough digging in like that. So this wind shear is likely to weaken the storm at some point. We unfortunately don't know when, but hopefully it will bring it down from its very high uh, category 5 strength now it should do at least and most models show that but one thing to take note of is this upper you can't see that whatsoever is this upper level jet streak uh, here to the north now this can uh, perhaps enhance the outflow to the storm and might at least for a certain amount of time counteract the weakening caused by the wind shear and especially during kind of Tuesday and Wednesday during the day where we're starting to see the uh, influence of that trough without the increased wind shear, we might actually see a very small possibility that the the storm will intensify further, uh, perhaps even exceeding the theoretical possible intensity based on the water temperatures. If it's a combination of water and upper level support, there's a very small chance uh, that it could exceed that 170 knot threshold, though we'll have to see what happens. So uh, as uh, the storm makes landfall, we, there's our shear acting on the storm, it's likely to weaken as this HAFS model shows. Now bear in mind this has not been able to keep up with the intensification and so the intensity forecast at least for the peak intensity is likely to be not too accurate. But you can see it does show as we have now a very deep um, and very strong hurricane, though in reality it's even stronger than this, a high-end category 5. Um, but what's going to happen as we pass uh, go into the future. I mean, actually, in fact, I was showing this, I uh, showed this to you, and it's showing deepening even further uh, during Tuesday and early in Wednesday. So, like I said, there's potentially uh, 190 miles an hour is maybe on the table. Now, that's not official forecast, that's just my opinion. For the all official information, go to the National Hurricane Center. Um, but this does show the weakening trend quite nicely. By now, the southwest shear is acting on the storm, and it's eroding away at this side. Uh, and so by the time it makes landfall in Florida, it's definitely a hurricane and it's likely to be a major hurricane, but potentially the impacts from wind and a rain may not be quite as strong. Now, the kind of opposition to this is that the extremely low pressure, the initial um, extremely strong winds and the expansion of the wind field mean this will pose a massive storm surge risk, especially for Tampa Bay, this region here, very populated. And if you get storm surge, which is currently forecast to be 8 to 12 feet, in Tampa Bay based off the National Hurricane Center's latest forecast, that's going to be catastrophic. Um, so really there's no way to, uh, of avoiding it. This is going to be a pretty awful extreme event for the Florida, Florida coastline. And the worst case scenario is if it maintains a fairly decent core and the um, weakening is counteracted by the jet interaction to the north, there's a small possibility, similar to Hurricane Ian, that the weakening does not really occur just as the storm is making landfall. Uh, and that's what we want to avoid. The best case is we get a maybe category two or three storm. Unfortunately, though, that still is going to have uh, major storm surge impacts along the Florida coastline, still also with strong winds and heavy rain. So that's about it for this video. Uh, to be honest, hurricanes and tropical weather is not my area of expertise, but this is just so exceptionally intense that I just thought I have to cover it. It's a potentially record-breaking event and also potentially a catastrophic event for Eastern Florida. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, take care and have a good evening. Bye.